If you have an interest in horses and love learning more about horses, the horse industry, teaching, or even managing your own horse business, then you're in the right place. We would love you to join us on our mission, which is to improve the lives of horses around the world through the education of riders, handlers, and trainers. So get comfortable, listen in, and enjoy. Today's chat's been brought to you by International Horse College. We have a mission to improve the welfare of horses throughout the world through the safe education of riders, handlers and trainers and that's what these chats are all about. Registered Training Organisation 31352. Now today we've got Larissa Bilston on. Larissa's been on a few times before and um, of course talking about feed and pretty much an expert there. Have a look at the previous chats, I think we've got chat number 382, even before that, 120, 382, 413 and 444. And have a look at farmlogic.com as well. How are you today anyway, Larissa? I'm pretty well, thanks, Glennis. Good, good to be back. Uh, yeah, good to talk to you, Larissa. And today we've got 10 valuable lessons about feeding horses for intense coat, colour, shine and healthy hooves. Now, you must get asked about that a lot. Yeah, you know, people tend to look to, to their horse's coat and how it appears as to a, a clue as to how healthy the horse is, and, and rightly so. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to sort of explain a little bit of the science behind how you, can, how you can produce a good coat, mostly in terms of feeding, but also a little bit in terms of management with, with you today. Okay, that'll be good. So if we're going to talk first of all, about the function and anatomy of the hair or the coat. If you can explain that a bit to us, that will probably give us a, a better understanding as we progress on to the other tips. Yeah, so I think it's important just to hold in the back of our minds sort of what it is that the that the hair is doing on the on the coat on the horse. Why mm -hmm. has it got a coat? It, its main job, obviously, is to protect the largest organ in the body, which is the skin. So the horse's coat provides a, a physical barrier against things like insects and, and the weather, cold weather, I guess warm weather to an extent as well. It, it insulates the horse and helps with temperature regulation. And there's also a really clever little little knack to the, to the natural shedding cycle that our horses have. And a lot of people don't realise that the only thing that controls when your horse gets a summer coat and when it gets a winter coat is the horse's body being able to detect whether the days are gradually getting longer or whether the days are gradually getting shorter. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's translating into springtime and summertime. So you cut, there's no point piling rugs on a horse to try to make it hot to make its coat come out. If you want to, if you do want to speed up um, the rate at which a horse sheds into its summer coat, what you need to do is stimulate springtime. So be putting lights on to create a, a longer day length um, or the horse perceives it as a longer day length so that it does shed its winter coat and have a summer coat. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a, a bit more recent science, although, you know, I can remember back at Pony Club people were talking about it but not really understanding it. Mm, mm. So, you know, that's, that's just something that we can really use to manipulate um, for our show horses and some of some of the competitors in other sports as well, where having that nice short coat without clipping is important. Yep. Um, yep. So, so yeah, you know, the, the the coat does give us a bit of an indication as to whether the horse is healthy or not. And we love, we all love to see our horses looking as good as they can look, don't we? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm thinking about coat colour. So, what nutrients are the most important then for coat colour and why are those nutrients important? Just explain a little bit more, you know, give us that, that extra depth of knowledge that you've got and just um, just give us some more information. Yeah. Okay, so so if we were able to look at a horse's hair, an individual hair under an electron scanning microscope and look at it up really, really close, what we would see would be something that was a little bit like a straw mm -hmm. that was filled up with colour. Um, and, and some little bubbles of air, um, some protein, some water, some fats. Um, but most importantly, the, the pigments that, that turn the hair whatever colour it's supposed to be. And so the, the pigments are living inside, inside each hair. 
when a horse doesn't have the right minerals to produce enough of the pigments that it needs to be the colour that it's genetically designed to be, we'll have a, a more washed out looking colour on our on our horse. So the nutrients that we actually need to be feeding horses to make sure that we're getting the most intense coat colour possible are copper and zinc, but even more importantly, the, the ratios between iron and copper and zinc and manganese when we look across the entire diet. Some other important nutrients for, for hair are biotin and vitamin B6 because they're nutrients that are used to produce keratin, which is the the protein basically that hair is made from. Mm-hmm. So sometimes, you know, you think about putting a rug or a sheet on or keeping them in a stable to get so the, the horses' coats don't get sun bleached. But what about a mineral deficiency? Is there a relationship between a mineral deficiency and that sun bleached look? Yeah, absolutely. So this ties back in particularly with those copper and zinc levels. Mm. Horses who don't get enough copper in their diet or horses who have too much iron and manganese in comparison to the amount of copper and zinc in their diet, they actually can't produce as much either black or red pigment as their genes are telling them that they should produce. So you can see you can see horses sometimes that are brown. Yes. And and when we correct their diet and make sure that the iron and copper and zinc and manganese are all fed in the right ratio, that horse might actually have been genetically black and it just couldn't produce enough black pigment in each hair to make it look black. So it put in each hair as much pigment as it could make with the with the slightly too low level of, of copper um, and we were seeing a brown horse. Now that's not to say that if you take a genetically brown horse and feed it a lot of copper, you'll turn it black. You won't. All you're able to do with good nutrition is allow the body to express its genes properly. Okay. Okay. So and, and so it's it's a similar story, I guess, with chestnuts as well. Sometimes yeah. a wishy looking chestnut, it's just not just not able to produce enough of the red pigment to have that really deep, intense colour. Mm-hmm. And and something something else that happens with copper deficiency too is and, and it can be an oil, an oil, especially an omega three oil deficiency. The coat um, can look quite rough, almost wormy. Yep. Um, and what's actually happening is that is the scales on the outside of each of each hair are getting sort of fluffed up and aggravated, and they stand up and they can hook at the end. Mm-hmm. And all those things just make the light reflect off the hair differently, and it appears to us as being dull and um, not shiny. Okay. So can hair really get bleached by the sun? So, yes. Okay. Just as a Just as a surfer gets sun-bleached tips, our, yes. horses, our horses do really sun-bleach. So we often hear the word sun-bleached and, and associate it with just that mineral deficient look. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can have a horse with, with a perfect mineral balance in its diet and the action of of salt um, and sunlight drying out the oil um, can can actually dry out the hair as well and you do end up with a horse that, whose coat really has bleached from okay. from the effect of salt and sun. Yes, yes. So it's a combination of making sure that the horse has got the right nutrients, they're not mineral deficient and making sure they're not getting too much sunlight. Or, or washing the sweat off is probably the okay. most key. Mm-hmm. management factor there so when you know that you've worked your horse and it's sweated mm-hmm. close it off you don't want it to bleach out on really hot days horses just standing around sweating all day if you need that horse to stay looking really dark and rich in color you'll need to go in at least daily and wash the wash the salt off okay so sometimes sometimes stabling horses or, or keeping them in shady yards is a is a way Good of reducing yeah. how hot they get so yes. there's less sweat in their coat. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the fact that what's actually happening there with that sun bleaching is that the skin and the, the coat are both drying out means that we really have to be very conscious of of our oil levels in the diet, especially the omega-3 oil levels. Okay, okay. All right, now changing coat colours. We've got a lovely little Palomino here 
and he's got the most beautiful coat colour, but in the winter he looks like a grey. It's just completely white. And when it's changing at the moment, he looks like he's he looks like he's a broken coloured horse, you know, half palomino and half white. <laughs> what can what can we do to stop that? Or what you know, what can we yeah, give us I'm sure you've got something yeah. a hint on that. So there are some really interesting things that happen, especially with our dilute colour horses. Um when they're in you know, they, they can be quite a different colour in summer mm. to winter. Some of them might start off quite light early in their life and darken up later on. So I think what we're seeing there is that there's a big genetic component to to how our horses, especially those dilute horses, um, change colour over the year and over their lives. Um, but regardless of the colour of, of horse, sometimes just that time of coat change can be so, so ugly. I've, I've been telling my friends lately that it, that one of my horses, he just looks like a giant shag pile flying carpet. <laughs> he seems to have taken forever to have lost his winter coat this year. Um, and yet I know it's a day length response. I know that it's, you know, that it's happening um, at this time of year as the day gets longer, no matter what the weather's like. But I'm I'm wondering whether it's so dry and that's having an impact on how much oil is available in his coat. And so it just seems to be taking longer for it to shed out. But the question even crossed my mind, and, and I often am asked this at, at, at um, springtime and autumn time from from customers, um, is is my horse's diet right or is mm. he wormy? Because he looks wormy. He just looks horrible. Um, and, and sometimes the answer is, well, the answer is always going to be, yes, let's check that the diet's right and let's check that your worming program's effective. Let's check that the horse is in good health otherwise. But don't panic. Sometimes they just do look like flying carpets for a month and and that's just because those the hairs of the old coat are letting go and are looking dull and are losing their, their colour and their shine. Um, but once they're gone and there are things we can do to help, you know, you can pop a rug on at that point to help rub some of the old coat out as mm-hmm. it lets go and lots of grooming, obviously, um, and you'll... you'll your mind will be at rest when that new coat comes through and everything's the colour that you were expecting mm-hmm. to see underneath. Okay. Now, if we want the coat to shine, is there guidelines for that? You know, some stables, you know, are able to produce horses with much better coat. All the horses in the stable have great coats. What can we do for those coat shine to get better coat shine? Okay. So basically any dietary oil creates shine. Mm-hmm. Whether it's a healthy or an unhealthy oil, whether it's just a little bit or quite a lot, oil oil in the horse's diet creates shine. And that's why we often see in springtime when horses go from eating a lot of hay or not having much pick in the paddock to suddenly having a lot of green, lush grass, they'll, they'll develop a shine no matter how poorly balanced the rest of their diet is. And what that is due to is the natural fat in the grass um, but we find that we get the best shine when we've got the omega-3 to omega-6 oils in the right balance as well. So we want to be seeing more omega-3s in the diet than omega-6s, which just means that if you are choosing if you're choosing an oil to add to the diet of your horse simply to get coat shine, um, unless your horse has got lots and lots of green grass and is not eating very much um, hard feed, Hard feeds tend to be quite high in omega sixes. Most vegetable oils, things like canola oil, rice bran oil, are all a lot higher in omega six than three. So unless your horse has got a lot of a lot of green grass to eat, you're probably better off looking to an omega three source to add to the diet for coat shine. Um, amongst the omega threes, if you go to the marine sourced omega threes. You need you'll get away with feeding less, so that can be really handy um, when you're looking at economics. But it can also be something that's useful for people who've got a show horse who's already in, in good condition and you don't want to put any more weight on it um, to be able to use a low dose omega three source. So I'm talking about things like fish oil. Uh, there are also now algae that are that are very high in marine marine forms of, of omega three. Um, from our plant source 
our plant source omega threes are principally coming from linseed or chia seed. Linseed are higher; they have a higher ratio of threes to six. So, 200 grams of, of linseeds is equal to about, oh, say, 60 mils of linseed oil. But it has to have been stabilised, or the omega threes disappear. And and they're sort of equivalent to we we've got a product that is a mixture of, of all three types of, of omega threes and we recommend that thirty grams of that is equivalent to to about the sixty mils of oil. Um, or you can go all the way down to feeding something like five or ten mils of just a purified fish oil. Yeah, I, look I think too if people want to know a little bit more about you know, I think because you've done a, an interview or a chat, um, oils and goods nutrition, and it's number of horse chats 444. Um, and I think you go into a fair bit of detail there about oils, don't you? You know, oils, aid oils, yeah. about omega 3, omega 6, the balance, the, you know, the different that's, types. Um, that's right. If, yeah. if you're interested in, in learning more about omegas, I really do suggest you go back and, and have a listen to that podcast because I, I sort of explained, I think, the yeah. nitty gritty of, of, in a lot of, of oils detail. in there. Yes, yeah. yes. So, so let, let's get back then to these guidelines for coat shine. Mm -hmm. So, you know, because we now know that those oils are really important, obviously we want to limit the use of shampoo that we use on our horse's coat because they're removing the natural oils. Um, if you do need to use shampoos, keep keep them horse specific. Their pH is, is different to the cheap human shampoos, so they do do better on a on a specific horse shampoo. I I like to just limit washing manes and tails and, and maybe white spots and just hose just mm -hmm. hose the rest of the horse, even if it's going to a competition. Um, that gets the dirt out, but keeps the oil on the coat for the shine. I've already talked about hosing the sweat off every day and if you choose to use them and, and many people who, who get their horses' diets right don't need to do it anymore is, is you can use those, those spray-on silicon sprays which put a shine on pretty much by smoothing the cuticle down. So I think I mentioned earlier when I was talking about the anatomy that every hair has scales on the outside. We want those scales all to lie very flat because that allows the light to reflect off and look beautiful and shiny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I suppose you know we, we all we all know and our grandparents and and older generations have said the way to get a shiny coat is to groom your horse, and that's absolutely right. Grooming with a with a harder brush, whether it's a curry comb or or even just a just a harder bristle brush, stimulates blood flow to the to the skin and so that helps that helps stimulate the natural oil glands. There's a there's a sebaceous gland next to every hair in the horse's skin and it produces the natural oil that creates shine. So the more you can groom your horse, the more the more sebaceous oil you're likely to stimulate production of. And then a soft brush is a good way to distribute that sebaceous oil right around the coat. Okay. I think all those tips we almost could have done one on just coat shine that would, that went into a lot of detail there. But I'm just thinking, you know, we talked about the coat colour and shine, the hooves. You know, what do we need to know to get? Do we need nutrients for healthy hooves? What do we need there? Yes. Yeah, so luckily for us as horse owners, if we're producing a beautiful shiny coat on our horse, we're pretty much already feeding it all the nutrients that it needs to have healthy hooves as well. So although I'm, I'm, I've been focusing on, on coat colour, we've pretty much been looking after the hooves at the same time. Okay. Something to remember and something that's really, really important with hooves is that if you turn your horse out for a few months of the year for a spell, remember that you need to keep nourishing those hooves because the hooves that are growing while your horse is having a holiday are the, are the hooves that you're going to be competing on when you bring your horse back into work. And there's nothing more annoying than if you've stopped your supplementation, you bring your horse in, you just get it fit and its feet fall apart because you've suddenly worked down to the point of the hoof where it was weak because it was it was nutrient deficient. So so to produce healthy hooves, we need to be feeding the right amino acids. 
and that's really easy to do. It's really easy to give a horse the right amount of protein, especially a mature horse. Uh, growing horses and breeding horses, we usually need to supplement um, with usually full fat soybean meal has the best has the best um, balance of the amino acids that our horses are most likely to be deficient in. But mature horses who've got enough forage to eat will pretty much always be getting enough of the right amino acids for good, strong, healthy hooves. Uh, the, the minerals that healthy hooves need are zinc and copper, and those are to be in the right ratios with the iron and manganese across the whole diet. And hooves also need the right level of sulphur and selenium. Uh, vitamin B6 and biotin are also important for healthy hooves, and that's because, as I, as I explained when we were talking about the nutrients for hair, those are the vitamins that keratin requires to so that's the building blocks of our hooves and our hair. Um, and omega-3s are important for good, healthy hooves as well. They they put the, the nice, glossy shine on, on the outside of a hoof, that waxy, protective layer. Mm-hmm. Well, we've, we've sort of talked about the coat shine, the healthy hooves, the, the coat colour. Tell me about, you know, good quality, well-fertilised grass. Does it provide all the minerals that a horse needs? You would think it would, wouldn't you? Um, especially if you see horses on really good quality pasture and they're nice and shiny. But no, it doesn't. The best grass in the world still doesn't produce still doesn't produce the right levels of minerals for horses. They're very frequently deficient in copper, and as we've learnt today, copper is so important for having a good a good looking, deep, intense coat colour. Um, we often see deficiencies in zinc and most parts of the world will also be selenium deficient in terms of our horses' requirements. And those minerals are all really important for healthy hooves and healthy coats. They play many, many other roles throughout the body as well. But the first things that we're likely to notice if they're not getting enough of those or if they're in the wrong mineral ratio are uh, that, that our, our horses' coats and hooves will not be optimum. So you, you pretty much need to be adding, even if your horse is, is fat on grass or is getting all the calories that he or she needs from grass, you still be needing, we'll still need to be adding some form of, of mineral balancing solution to to top up and, and balance out those ratios between copper and zinc and iron and manganese at the, at the very least. Yeah. Sometimes you'll also need to to make changes to the macro minerals, your calcium and your phosphorus and your magnesium levels and so on and mm-hmm. salt. Um, but that's, again, probably going back to one of my earlier podcasts where we've talked about just basic good nutrition. Yeah, look, I, I think if you haven't, um, it's a bit too late now, but, you know, I think any of our guests, if you haven't heard that particular guest, go back and listen to the previous podcast because often when you've been on a few times, it sort of builds on. But just going back to the minerals, you know, I'm thinking that horses, different horses are going to be on a different diet, you know, depending on their work and their age and quite a lot of other components. But why do the minerals need to be balanced across the entire diet? You know, when there's so many different diets, can't we just, you know, you you tell us a little bit more about minerals and, and why they need to be balanced across the whole diet. So there's a lot of minerals will interact with each other, mm-hmm. and it means that even if our even if the feeds that we're giving our horse provide um, more than the recommended daily intake of particular minerals, if the ratios are wrong, it means that the horse isn't actually able to absorb and use them at the right levels. So a very common one is is horses on very high calcium diets will mm-hmm. become phosphorus deficient, even if the diet's providing more than 100% of the horse's requirements for phosphorus. Um, and and in the context of, of today's topic, um, where we're looking at coat colour, copper and zinc interact, and as do copper and iron, copper and manganese. Okay. So if we don't if we don't get the levels right across everything that the horse is eating, if those ratios are unbalanced, we just don't get the we don't actually achieve good nutrition. So when we when we are looking at the mineral ratios in the horse's diet, we need to be counting everything. We need to be counting 
the minerals that are in the horse's grass, mm -hmm. such hay, um, any hard feeds that are given, whether they're plain grains or whether it's a pre-mixed feed that has added vitamins and minerals. Yep. Um, and, and we need to include if, if they use any powdered or pelletized uh, mineral balances as well. What, what about the diet itself? It's very easy for someone to, you know, have a well-balanced diet and I'll just add a, a little bit of this for this and a little bit of that for that and a little bit of that for that. How, how can you actually tell if your horse's diet is well-balanced, particularly if you've added a few extra things since the last time someone worked it out for you? Yeah, what you really need to do is, is get a complete diet analysis done for your horse. Mm -hmm. The only the only practical and really um, really functional way to know that your horse's diet is well balanced is to is to measure everything that's going in through all those different feed sources and compare that up against against what the horse's uh, basic requirements are for each of those nutrients. And then, as a last step, be checking the mineral ratio. Uh, the, the most accurate way to be absolutely certain whether all those mineral levels are right is, unfortunately, to burn the entire horse and measure, oh, measure the mineral oh no. levels. <laughs> so most, most of us aren't curious enough to need to, to know at that level of detail. But, unfortunately, uh, blood tests in most instances and for most minerals don't tell us anything important. The, the role of the blood in the body is just to move nutrients from from where they're absorbed um, through the gut or from where they're stored elsewhere in the body and take them to the cells of the body that need to use them. So for many, many minerals, um, the horse has to be dangerously sick before mm -hmm. we see that the blood is deficient in a mineral. And and I guess calcium to phosphorus, again, is a, is a good is a good way of understanding that the horse will actually mine the calcium out of its bones because hormones are dictating how much calcium must be in the blood at all times. Mm -hmm. So while ever it's got any body store of calcium, it's going to be pulling that into the into the bloodstream to maintain the, the right level of, of mineral in the blood. Um, a hair analysis has similar problems. Hair puts Hair puts into hair the, the minerals that hair needs to have in it. It's mm -hmm. not really a good general indicator of the whole body mineral status. And that's because minerals are stored, different minerals are stored in different places throughout the body. Things like mm -hmm. a liver biopsy might, might be an indicator of, of particular things and something that a vet might use sometimes. Um, but, but realistically, for most of us, the best way to know whether your horse's diet is well balanced, especially if you have been adding bits and pieces, um, is to get a nutritionist to analyse it for you or to go and use a program. So there's some software out there, um, including the Australian Feed Excel, which is an online database. Uh, but there are other packages as well that, that will analyse your horse's diet. You just have to be prepared to go out there and weigh how much, how much you're giving your horse um, and even better if you can send some of your hay and grass away to a lab to find out what the mineral levels are of, of those forages. Okay. If it's not practical for you to do that, nutritionists will will sort of use average values that are based on thousands and thousands of samples. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Larissa, it's been, yeah, very in-depth again. You know, each time you do a different subject, you think it's only sort of slightly different, but there's so much extra information that you can give on the subject that you choose. If people would like to contact you, what's the best way? Because I'm sure that you'll get people that have got extra questions about this. Yeah, you're, you're welcome to get in touch through our Facebook page, which mm -hmm. is Equine Vitmin, um, or my email address is larissa, L-A-R-I-S-S-A, -S at pharmalogicglobal.com. All right, look, those, that's great. And, of course, those details will be on your page, which will be horsechats.com slash. I think it would be Larissa. It must be five, is it, Larissa? It must be, yes. Certainly being a, a regular guest and a very welcome regular guest for us as well, you know, just giving people a, a you know, we try and do a bit of everything. You know, we, um, we come along and just talk about nutrition and, and the knowledge that you do. It's been wonderful. So, um. That's been brilliant. We hopefully will get you back again very soon as well. 
Thank you. My pleasure. If, if anyone's got any any special requests for topics, I yes. guess write it write in and, and let us know, and and I can come back and cover it. Perfectly. Okay. Thank you, Larissa. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, Glennon. If you've enjoyed this chat, then please comment, rate, and subscribe. If you'd like any changes or recommendations for guests, then please contact us through horsechats.com. And while you're online, have a look at the government accredited courses at internationalhorsecollege.com. Registered Training Organisation 31352. Remember that our comments and instructions are general in nature and do not take into consideration your individual horses or your individual ability and circumstances. If you enjoyed this podcast, then please leave your comment below.